Welcome back to my channel. Nearly tripped over the puppy. Welcome to another vlog. A vlog that I'm excited to share with you guys because Em and I are off on an empty adventure. And I'm excited because we haven't actually been on a road trip together in the same vehicle for quite a little while now actually. Um, we've been traveling the horses separately to try and make them both behave and focus that little bit better rather than have the added strain of the old separation anxiety of when they've traveled for a lot of hours together then getting all angsty and upset when they have to leave each other so where we've been competing or training we've been traveling them separate a lot recently um, so yeah it feels like ages since we've done a bit of an empty adventure we've just been going off in convoy however it is only em and i going today not the ponios but we are of course going to visit some horses which i will tell you a bit more about shortly because i'm currently just taking my doggies down the lane and i thought i'd give you a little pup date pop pop puppy gun <whistles> yeah you're growing away aren't you you're four months old now <laughs> Yes, you're 11 still. Yes, you are. You've had a haircut though, ready for our holly bobs. But yeah, just taking them for a little walk ahead of getting on the road, picking them up. So I will tell you a little bit more about where we are going and why we are going there when we are en route. Someone thinks she's going for a week. We're going for a day. <laughs> Literally, this feels like hand luggage, like m m packed to the maximum that you could get on EasyJet. It's got a couple of pairs of shoes and stuff in there. <laughs> Good job. I didn't bring a suitcase, or there would not be room in this vehicle. Woohoo! Back on the road! Eventuring. Eventuring. <laughs> Everybody's all been dying for an empty adventure. They have! They, they have. have, yes, they have. We can only do them now without our horses. <laughs> I've explained yeah. a little bit. About. Oh, fair. Yeah, so we haven't really been in the car together for a while because we're just going convoy or something now because of naughty ponios. And it's not they, worth the added tension. <laughs> They just love each other far too, much. too much. To be fair, did you notice what Addy got like when she noticed Banks? No. When you got back from your cross country? I didn't she jumped know. up she on the ramp, him. everything, yeah. And I was like, he didn't and see that her. is why. <laughs> he yeah. didn't see her, did Thanks. he? Thanks. I don't know. No, probably not. Well, he just got back from cross country, so he, he was like, thinking wow. about that, wasn't he? How well, funny. Yeah, and I, then I was like, oh, please don't now turn into a madam. But she didn't. She settled really quickly. <laughs> but it just, it did He's highlight that. so she, handsome. She just loves him. Just absolutely loves him. I don't blame her. No. <laughs> no. Anyways, we're not. Debriefing about <laughs> eventing today. Lost them, but we have both got eventing vlogs live. Yeah, watch them already. Go check them out. Happy days. But yeah, today isn't about our horses, is it? It's not. It's about some other very special horses. Yes, which if you have been a follower of both of our channels for the past couple of years, you will know that we have supported Great British Racing's National Racehorse Week. Wow, well, that was a mouthful. Yeah, <laughs> came out quite fluently. Though. Yeah, but runs in September. This year is running from the ninth. It starts when I'm on holiday, I'm sure. Which is why I couldn't attend the actual week. <laughs> you are correct. Hey! 9th to the 17th of September this year. Ooh. And as I say, we have promoted it, taken part in it uh, for the last couple of years. Yeah, this will be the third year, won't it? Yeah. And it's actually been really insightful into giving us more information into the life of a racehorse, hasn't it? during its training and its aftercare its second life yeah isn't it because yeah. they have careers after racing too yeah. which is a bit more about what we're going to be finding yeah. out don't we? yeah it's exciting so so far we've been to an actual racing yard, yard right yeah, next Epsom, to there, yeah. right next to the gallops that was very that was exciting awesome. that was when we went with the other girls and chris hughes was there as well yes <laughs> Loved that. That was fun, but that was like full on working. Like six lots went out in the morning when we were there, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. And it was so, so busy and full on, and yeah, they it were actually just so like regimented. It, yeah. yeah. They knew exactly the routines did not change, and that that's what they were saying. Oh, they the all horses. got to roll in that sandpit after yeah. their training, didn't they? Which yeah. Was lovely. Yeah. They were treated like kings. Oh, they they really are. Yeah, definitely. 
And then we've been to Harry Fry. That was very good as well. Yeah. And again, oh, and state of the art facilities. And we it? went it there beautiful. when it was actually National Racehorse Week, so it was full of the public as well, and it was super yeah. busy. Like there was such good turnout for that one. There will be a list and a link below on this vlog of the yards that still have availability. Yeah. Um, because during that week, it is free to attend. You can go and check out the yards and have tours and there's all sorts going on it's not just training yards it is aftercare centers and starts, and starts i was going to say starts at the beginning of the the, the process of a racehorse's yeah. life as well but you can pop in on their website your postcode to find out what is the nearest yard that is opening it's doors it's gates to you places but make a day of it take your mum take your dad take a yeah. sibling your friend and yeah. Uh, yeah, go and enjoy it. Yeah, we yeah. took my mum to Harry Fry's yeah, yard, didn't we? She, she loved it. it. She did. Yeah. And then last year, you actually got to ride a racehorse as part I of did. it, which is like once in a lifetime opportunity. Oh my goodness, it was You amazing. didn't have to go through that gruelling fitness test that Lucy did in order to, <laughs> in order <laughs> no. to enable you to ride one. No, but I wasn't racing, I was just no. training. But you did do the long, the long I did training do it. session. Yeah. Was it a mile? You I must love it. Roll, like an, an yeah. In over. Yeah, I do. I do. I can send that <laughs> over. I did absolutely love that. That was amazing. And then we also went to the retraining session at Warren Grigex. Am I pronouncing that right? There's spaces still there. Where awesome. Yogi was doing the retraining session. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was really interesting it's as well, well, wasn't it? Yeah. Like teaching them how to and that series step is away from like hurdling jumps to normal jumping. To normal jumping. Yeah. 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 And that series is actually available to watch on H and C Plus if you have got a membership. So go over there and give it a watch. Yeah, um, and that was really good seeing behind the scenes of that. And that yard was beautiful too. Yes. And it was in Lambourne, wasn't it? Which is the Valley of the Racehorse, and you literally couldn't go 50 <laughs> meters without then having another beautiful <laughs> yard, wasn't it? It was lovely. It was really really good fun but I'm excited for tomorrow I think it's going to show us a whole different aspect now I did touch on it a little bit when we went to Harry Fry's and I reached out to you guys to people on Instagram to send me in their stories of their racehorses that have been rehomed with them and what different careers they've gone into because there are lots of different classes now like ROR um, obviously Lucy's got Ember like yeah. see how what a great job she's doing I was fortunate enough to ride him at camp yeah. recently so that's probably my first oh no I'd actually saying that I was going to say that was my first X racer but three or four of the horses that I rode in France on the Global Amateur Tour were they were X race horses ah. yeah the one that I loved the most Polar Polar Dream he had done loads of hurdling races oh cool yeah, yeah. and he actually stopped racing because he jumped too big so he wasted too much time, time in the air, in the air so yeah. that's why he's now a show jumper ah. oh very interesting so I didn't yeah, know they, that. Have, they have so many incredible opportunities oh, it is yeah but where we're going tomorrow is completely different to what you would imagine x resources to do i think isn't it oh 100 percent. because i think you always think of them being hot-headed Potentially hard to handle, but yeah, actually like overly energetic. Yes, yes. Yeah. and yeah, wanting yeah. to get on with the job because they're probably well, they're used to <laughs> racing, <laughs> a higher That's, pace of life. Exactly. Yeah. But actually, tomorrow at Greatwood, where we are going, we are going to see a whole different aspect to a racehorse's second life. Not only do they rehome former racehorses, they also utilise. The racehorses that can no longer be ridden to help the local communities, children and adults with special education needs. So helping the Basically, local community, yeah. which I think is absolutely they're wonderful. They're used as like therapy horses. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When they feel that they're like isolated or they might have like anger issues. Yeah. And we all know when we spend time with the animals, they all make us feel so much better, yeah. more relaxed and happy. And that is well, what... Well, they say about patting a dog, don't they? That it's therapeutic. Yeah. And absolutely. Yeah. So pat a pony. Uh, incredible. Yeah. Incredible. An extra yeah. resource pony. Exactly. Oh. Excited to get there and find out a bit more about it. Yeah. And to meet them all. So we shall see you guys there tomorrow morning. So we have arrived bright. Well, it's not that bright and early, but it is bright. It is bright and sunny. <laughs> it's sunny. It's yeah. lovely, isn't it? At Greatwood. And from what we've seen so far, it's an absolutely beautiful place. It's really peaceful. It's so peaceful until I got here. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I do need to whisper a little bit. Yeah, it's very peaceful. Be... Lots of um, chickens and goats and yeah. very relaxed racehorses that we saw on the drive in. 
and they've got one out of the stable ready for us to meet the gorgeous you're gonna have to pronounce his name for me Marlavus. And he is also supporting National Racehorse Week with his trendy rug, isn't he? So can you tell me a little bit about Marlavus? So he was in training with Warren Great Tricks and joined us due to some changes in his ligaments for his retirement. Um, and since coming, he's worked with all the students as part of the educational programme. Wow. Um, and he is a favourite on the yard. He also goes out and visits people in care homes. So he is... And he looks so relaxed and so chilled and chilled. content. <laughs> we do hear he sadly had an injury, which is what this little lump on his face is. What happened to him? Um, so he got kicked in the head and fractured his skull, so he's had a surgery, been in and out of the vets, but we've taken care of it all, and it's just the swelling that we hopefully will be coming We'll go down, oh, bless him. You are beautiful, Mar Marlavus, <laughs> when I can pronounce your name yeah. correctly. Yeah, and how, and how lovely that he's come from the yard that we visited yeah. last year for National Racehorse Week. Oh. So do you know how much racing he did or what he got up to when he was racing? Um, <laughs> he had 20 starts. Oh, you knew already. He, you were listening earlier. Well done. <laughs> 20 starts, four wins and six placings. Well done, Emily. Go girl! <laughs> but then has retired and is now a therapy horse, yes. which is incredible. He I looks very relaxed. Yeah, exactly. And how it transformed to be a therapy horse in quite a short space of time. Like, yeah, he's took he's to it really well. A complete natural when he came. He's always been quiet and like this. Um, so we do like assessments on the horses and pass with flying colours. And yeah. Almost used every single day with students. Wow. So he's also used with the courses that we do for the assessments. So he's a big part of the educational programme. Oh. And how old is Mar Marla of us now? Ten. Ten now. So still very early in his career, aren't you? Lots of years ahead of you to do your job mm -hmm. and help people out. Oh. And what's his plan today? What's he got on the agenda? Um, so I think he's going to do a little parade for you guys. Oh. Um, with his friends. But he's in, he comes in every day, he's got, looking after a youngster as well, who's oh, coming okay. and being brought into work. So he comes in every day, has a breakfast, gets pampered. Oh. Um, because when the students are in, he is used every day, so we just keep the routine the same yeah. with them all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. So he helps train the other horses too? Yeah. Wow, what a talented man. <laughs> Emily, what's that in your hand, apart from your phone? <laughs> What do you mean, shush? Where's it gone? Where have you put <laughs> it? Have you hidden it? Yeah, Katie. Yeah, I <laughs> she didn't really be teacher's pet and listen that well. She actually cheated because she read it off his name plaque off his door. <laughs> still had the but facts. still, yeah, you still had the facts, thank you. You did better than I did. <laughs> Wow, the barn is gorgeous. It's so open and airy for them. Who is your neighbour, Marlavus? I'm still getting that wrong each time. This is Dave. Hi, Dave. He came to us as a three-year-old from High Clay Racing Agency. Um, and he is now got four. And Scarlett here is bringing him back into work, re-educating him, and then he'll be up for re -hooming. And then they're like on a permanent loan to the... Yep, so basically we're an umbrella charity. So we <coughs> Ownership and everything like that, uh -huh. but it's we have a contract basically say that if you no longer want the horse or are unable to keep the horse, that they return back to us. So they've <laughs> always got a forever home. <laughs> And these two are terrible at <laughs> But that's why it's lovely about having the open stables, isn't yeah. it? So they can do that and they can interact with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Even when they're in the stables, they can be a bit like they're in the fields. They're so huge he stables. Is a Galileo as well. As well. Oh. He's oh. a very special boy. <laughs> so is his plaque there? What, what, what's he been winning or racing? So he, actually, <laughs> he was in training with William Haggis, but he never actually made it to the track. Oh, okay. Um, he was a bit too slow. He's, <laughs> he, he looks a bit shorter, so maybe his legs are a little bit less long. <laughs> <laughs> they are proper playing, aren't they? Bless them. <laughs> so Scarlett, you've been bringing him back into ridden work and doing a bit of his education. How's that going? Uh, he's coming back into it really nicely. Yeah. Um, we did lots of long raining at the beginning, just getting him used to being under a normal saddle, not a exercise okay, or a cool. saddle. Um, he's really nice and relaxed. Um, 
He clearly loves you. <laughs> Big dope. <laughs> but he's been really good. Um, yeah. I've been just doing light hacking with him at the moment. Yeah. He's really building him up. Yeah, just a bit of walk and trot work, is it? Yeah. Or, yeah. Is it like a certain plan that you follow, like like you said, long raining, then hacking? Is there yes. a thing that you're training him to be, or is it just all round? Just um, getting him to be used to being ready normally, yeah. hacking, yeah. Yeah. and then when he gets rehomed, hopefully, if someone wants to take him further, he will be. Able do to that with them, yeah. 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 Just getting him the basic stand with hacking. Yeah. Work and yeah. Then, Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I should be telling the vlog this, but Dave will shortly, shortly be up for rehoming. I mean, we've heard a bit about what he's doing at the moment, but what is the process before they can be advertised as um, ready to be rehomed? So he's done all his long raining, so he's now being ridden. <laughs> yeah. So he's like hacking at the moment to start building him up, but it's just the make sure they can hack on their own in company, walk to a canter in the school, pop a jump, and then all that there. stuff. So then they can go to their new carers as got the basics and then it's for them to decide to what education they want to take them forwards with do you have a list of like carers that are looking to rehome um, or anything so like we that, kind of advertise it and then they get in contact with us um come meet the horse and then they kind of have a checklist of things to fill out and then we pair them up with the horse and then we see oh. how the two of them get on together um em's been saying for a little while she might like an x-ray yeah. horse, haven't you uh oh oh no <laughs> <laughs> do you want one called dave <laughs> Because <laughs> he's only four, so he's still a baby, really, aren't you? Still a baby. Do you like to go home with Auntie Emily? Mm. <laughs> it's a lovely colour too, and a nice height actually, Em. Yeah, I know. Not too big. I know. <laughs> Did you bring a hat? <laughs> so this possibly hasn't been racing, or <laughs> a therapy pony, or. No, okay, I'm intrigued to know what's coming next. Uh, head fundraising, Sasha. This is Seven Up, who's her daughter, Scarlett's sister, actually. Oh, okay. Pony. Um, but he is also used as and when he is needed, so he's been great with getting Dave and Burlington over there out hacking as a lead horse. Oh, uh, okay, party. yeah, so use him to the horse's advantages, yeah. yeah. Um, he looks very chill. <laughs> chill day. Um, a snooze in his stable. Yeah, so he's kind of the nanny pony, I guess you'd call him. Oh. Um, he's... Yeah. <laughs> a very important role. And he lives out with the Shetlands. Aww. <laughs> and they don't lead him astray? No, they're very good Shetlands, to be honest. <laughs> wow, I've never heard those sentences before. I don't know, mine's very good, but I think it's because he's a miniature. Yeah. I think miniatures are often have a slightly better reputation than actual Shetlands. So, ooh, so both are being tacked up at the moment. Is that Burlington? Yes, yeah, so this is Burlington, yeah. and he's with our manager, Susie, so she can... Tell us a little bit more about him. So he was born 18th of January 2015. Yes. And he's, he's an eight year old. Yeah. Um, and he actually came into Greatwood initially um, as a two year old. Um, I think he was entire. Okay. Um, obviously, being a two year old, we're very limited to what we could do with him. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to obviously give him time to grow and out in the field yeah um we then actually brought him into work um rehomed him so he went out on our loan scheme yeah horse. Mm -hmm. unfortunately the lady that had him things didn't work out um, okay so that's the great thing about us which is we are the safety net so they always, they come, always back. come back yeah, yeah that's so lovely isn't it for them as well yeah, yeah. absolutely um so unfortunate but that's why we're here and that's why yeah. the system works as it does yeah, yeah. So yes, this is Burlington. Um, so has he been back for long or? He came back in the winter, yeah. um, but he just needed his kind of, he needed some time. His head had been blown a bit, I think, because he'd moved yards, bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll give them as long as they need. Um, and for us, he came back in the winter and it was only a month ago that suddenly we looked at him and went, no, he's ready. Ready yeah, to start yeah, doing something fun. again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he looks so relaxed and happy. Like you say, though, this yard is so relaxed and peaceful, isn't it? That the thing is, if they do end up moving to like a busier livery yard, it can be more stressful for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's why it's so important that we try the best we can to match the right horse with the right home. Yeah. Um, some of them will go into livery yards and be absolutely fine. Others need that one-on-one -on -one in a private environment. Yeah, very true. Oh, you're liking that one, Emily. You're going to want to take them all home at this rate. <laughs> There I am asking Dad for another stable. I'm like, Dad, can you build me another two or three? <laughs> <laughs> Who have we got here in the lovely purple rug? So this is the cash 
international man and he joined us about two months ago. Okay. He was in training with Nicky Henderson, got rehome, well, came out of racing, got rehomed from racing, and then we worked quite closely with ROR, so he then got rehomed from his past owner to us through ROR. Okay. Um, so we have high hopes for him to be our flagship horse, so we work with Newbury Race Course, so we take horses as ambassadors to come and meet the public to get the word out. Oh, wow. So we are hoping he is going to take that on as his job. Um, he's been started with students and he's really good, really chilled, really yeah. happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fly the flag for Greatwood. Yeah, pretty much. Well, he suits the rug, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Oh. He visited the care home for the first time last week and was fantastic. So he's been with Marv That's out. so lovely. And he's kind of learning the ropes off of Marv a bit so then he can then take the So they'll go together? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's so lovely. I bet it's amazing seeing the reward of what the people get at the care homes from having them yeah, there. No, definitely. So it's really nice to kind of give them the memories and the happy times and their family come and join. Um, and it's kind of the highlight of the week for them. So they're always asking their carers and stuff. And it's apparently, um, we had a lady at Auburn Care Home that was wouldn't wash her hands because she loved the smell of the horses. Oh my goodness. She had ridden her whole life. So oh, that's so it lovely. Was just a nice bit of home that we could bring to her. And yeah. Everything. Oh, oh, it makes me emotional. <laughs> <laughs> You're a gorgeous boy, aren't you? What's his stable name? Uh, so we call him Cash. Cash. So Good name, I like that. <laughs> and he's had 32 starts, 12 over jumps, 20 on the flat, 6 wins. Oh, you're a bit of a champion. I know, I can't believe Em's bypassed the chestnut. Chestnuts are normally your favourite. You're off to get the content. <laughs> so we've got Mally. Yeah. I can pronounce that. Uh, yeah, Mally. Wow, 154 starts. Yes, so I think he is one of the most raced racehorses still. Wow. Um, and he was very successful with 14 wins in 37 places. Um, he joined us, came for retirement, and he's got a bit of a funny story. So there was a lady in Devon who needed, I think, a companion for her horse. So Helen was like, right, I've got the horse for you. Um, and Mally decided that he loved Greatwood so much that he would refuse to eat whilst he was up there. Oh! So I think Helen decided to get the transport, bring him home, and as she walked him through the barn, he grabbed a mouthful of hay and went into the field and ate. <laughs> so he, <decided laughs> he just he wanted to come back. <laughs> oh, um, bless him. So he's been undergoing eye treatment, and he lives out. He's done he, all his work with the students and stuff, so he still is used, but he's kind of got the nice retirement in the field now. Oh. So. And he's a thirsty boy. <laughs> Oh, he's gorgeous. And he is a yard favourite. He is Sasha the fundraiser's favourite horse. She used to ride him. Yeah. And said he was very, very fast. <laughs> well, I, you can tell that with how many starts he had. 154 starts, 14 wins and 37 places. That's pretty impressive, mate. And living out your days here. Lovely to meet you. Okay, and last but by no means least in the barn today, we have is, um, Transpeak. Yeah. Was that correct? Yeah, Am I getting there? Yeah, we just call him TP. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> TP. Hi, T. Oh, thank you, TP. That's lovely of you to put on camera for me. Should we come up this end? Can you tell me a bit about TP? So, TP came from training. He's been here for quite a long time now. Um, and he's been used for education. And when some of the older staff were here, he was actually used in a demonstration with jousting. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so he also got taught how to bow so when the queen came and visited us he actually bowed for the queen no way oh my goodness what clever clogs um but as he's a bit older now he gets used for students sometimes but the rest of the time he's in the field eating food with his best friend next door Mally. oh <laughs> and what did he do in his racing days have a look shall we oh you didn't do much racing tp you had four starts and two places <laughs> he just wanted to be a bowing pony for the queen all his life <laughs> bless him oh he's lovely too they're all so chill and i think like we were just saying that's what um people automatically assume that thoroughbreds are hot-headed so to yeah. speak and always need to be busy and on the go but actually they quite like doing nothing <laughs> they, <laughs> they quite like chilling out in their stable don't you marv are you quite happy in there Modelling your rug, you're doing a very good job of it. So I believe you guys are taking us somewhere now. Yes, if you'd like to follow Scarlett. Okay, Scarlett, I'm feeling a little bit... Yeah, you've got to come along too, Em, come on. <laughs> this is the educational stable. We've got three different steeds. I'm going to capture Emily's face as she comes around the corner. 
I did ask if you brought your hat with you. <laughs> it's quite high up. <laughs> Might be needed. <laughs> Got three to choose from. Oh, Is this the three? starter? Oh. <laughs> Bluey. Do they have names? This is Eddie, I think. This is Joey. Oh, oh Joey. I don't know who's me. Joey just makes me think of Warhorse. Yeah. Joey. <laughs> okay, what do we have to do? So, Scarlett, would you like to see? Demonstrate. Come on, Scarlett. <laughs> so, we have this exercise which we use for the students so mm -hmm. you can get an idea of how the racehorses before they came here would have been ridden and the different types of tack. Exactly. That, yeah, compared to a um, GP yeah, saddle or. Yeah. So wow. I'm going to give a quick demonstration. Yeah. Um, and then it's your turn. We're going to take over the range. You're going to let us loose. Okay. I'm excited. It's only in a snaffle as well, Em. Have you ever been on one, something like that? No. No. I don't think I have. So Ooh. I do a lot of demonstrations for the students because I used to ride out. A okay. The Kublers, who's also in Lambourne. Right, yeah. Um, That's where I rode out, wasn't it? I think it might be actually, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I hope you're right now. Yeah, I do too. I just said that. But, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so we're going to be standing up with only our ankles and our hands touching the horses. Wow. That and looks hard work. You almost need to squat in the okay. saddle. Okay. Yeah. Push your bum back and have a straight back and then push and have to try and hold position <laughs> for as long as you possibly can on the exerciser. Wow. These are great for the jockeys for fitness and correcting position and posture. Yeah, and yours looks pretty impressive. Very. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm going to be looking like that. Um, but yeah, it is quite hard to do. Yeah. I'm not very fit, so I can't do it very hard. <laughs> I think you're going to be doing it a lot longer than I will be. <laughs> Emily's quite a competitive person too. Um, the jockeys would normally be a lot lower down. Okay. So no, I'm not a jockey, so this may not be the right position, but jockeys tend to go all the way. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. More Down. streamlined. Yeah. Wow. Pressure. <laughs> I know. Oh, he's wiggly. Was he, what was he called again? Eddie. Eddie. Steady, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie. Oh, 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 Eddie. Oh
Ross is here, racing to success. It's incredible, you just don't know that there's places like this that exist no. until we get opportunities like this. Oh, wow, so that's great. Really cool. How we've developed over the years. Wow. From, this is where the classroom is now, so as a guide. Oh, okay, yeah. It's now a education classroom. It's a milking parlour. It was, yeah. Oh. And then the main barn that we've been in with the horses, you can see it was just a cattle barn. Yeah. And then obviously Ellen and Bill and the team built all the stables in there. The main office that you came into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and then Emma, good old whiteboard. You love a whiteboard, love don't a whiteboard, you? Yeah. You love the organisation. And we're heading back to school, heading to the classroom. Oh, I love how the purple theme continues as well. Purple everywhere. Purple. And we've got the board with all our horsepower horses on there so the students can learn, learn, all their, face. learn all their names. So the horsepower horses are the ones that are used for the educational side of it, yeah? Yeah, and we'll grow on that depending on what horses we've got coming in. Yeah. Um, once they've done their assessments, mm -hmm. um, they can join the horsepower, but obviously those are our... They've got to pass the test. Those are our ones that <laughs> Obviously, it's Great Woods, a charity for and helps educate disadvantaged children and young adults. So, this is the classroom where you bring them to start training the children, not just the horses, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. So, when the children first arrive, we bring them in here just to kind of settle them down, uh, sort of wishing them to introduce uh, ourselves to each other. You, um, how many would you have in on the average? Class? Yeah. Like, so it depends. So we we'll get some groups in from from schools. So we might have a group of sort of between six and ten children. Um, so it's usually around yeah, so like six to eight or so. Yeah. And um, but we also do a lot of one on ones, especially sort of after the lockdown. It's obviously been like some high levels of stress and anxiety mm -hmm. with the kids. Um, so we have been doing more some one on one um, sort of sessions as well. Yeah. Um, and then we've got programs for primary, so it's sort of all that children between, um, between like six and ten years old. Cater for all different age ranges. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. They'll come in and they'll do a six-week program, so they'll come in like once a week, um, and uh, and then uh, sort of we take them outside, spend time with the horses, and they'll also sort of uh, work a little bit with like the chickens and the goats. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah we've got such a wide variety of uh, animals around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because um, especially when you're like, you know, this big sort of a, massive horse a big horse. thoroughbred can feel a little bit yeah, daunting. Yeah. yeah, and I love all the motivational quotes you've got up here as well. Yeah. If you believe in yourself, anything is possible. <laughs> so we do, we do sort of try, and uh, you know, so the horses, the horses do a lot for uh, sort of for the children in terms of emotional regulation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, naturally, like when they're out there, they just can't help themselves. Like it's almost like you take them out, whether it's primary children or secondary children or adults. Actually, you take them outside, and like I know that I've kind of I've lost them to the horses for yeah. about five minutes. Yeah, just while they're like totally. Yeah, upset. and you can't help but smile. I don't imagine. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. And even the so like we we have children and adults who come in and they're a bit wary, mm -hmm. you no, know, because they're like the horses are obviously quite big and they can be quite intimidating and. Um, you know, maybe they haven't worked with horses before, mm -hmm. maybe they have a background or sort of like a history of trauma yeah. or stress yeah, and anxiety. Yeah. Um, you know, and then they come up and they're just like, oh, you know, like, what do we do? But even then, they just, they kind of stand in the presence of the horses mm. and, you know, and then they might sort of go closer and closer. And yeah, you know, yeah. And often they do end up reaching out to them. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, sort of the horses here will kind of, you know, yeah. generally sniff your hand to make yeah. sure that you're not hiding some food. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, but then, oh, I bet they develop so much over the last six weeks, every time that they're here, I can imagine. Yeah. Just seeing them more and more. Yeah. Like, say, so if they haven't had deans with horses in the past, but I can imagine. Oh, feelings thermometer, yeah. that's lovely. I like that idea. Yeah. I'm in charge of how I'm feeling, and today I'm choosing happiness. Intrigued. Can you tell me about the top earners? <laughs> 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 I can try. It's not their race winnings, is yeah. it? Yeah, it's their total. It's their total winnings. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. my goodness! Yeah, he was a fast boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we were too busy being educated in the classroom that we missed you turning the boys out. <laughs> so you keep the mares and geldings separate. Yeah. We've yeah. only actually got four mares. Okay. Um, we don't get very many. Come in. <laughs> 
Um, obviously, a lot of them go on to breeding. Bee mummies, yeah. <laughs> um, so we've only got the four, and most of them are geldings. Obviously, you get the odd cult. Um, not so much nowadays, but 25 years ago we did. Um, yeah. Cults are gelded, aren't they, earlier on now? Yeah. They and they're having a nice play out there. <laughs> Oh, so how is it when you... Oh, sorry, you're sorry. straight in there. Go on, then. I get... say, how long have you worked here? Um, I've been back for two years, um, but I was here when Helen originally moved up from Devon and set up the charity in Wiltshire. Oh, wow. I worked for her then. Um, and actually, I left because I wanted to go and do the breeding side, you know. I was really passionate about following the steps of a thoroughbred from foaling all the way through to sales and then yearling. Yeah. yeah, it's whole life. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. Oh. What was your question going to be? I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> now I was going to say about when you reintroduce a new horse to the herd, how how does, I mean I've recently had to do it and it hasn't been that pleasant, so how, how do you do it? Or is it easier with a bigger herd I guess? Cause... Um, it is easier with a bigger herd, but we always pair them up. Okay. So a new horse that comes in will pair up with another horse. Yep. Um, whether that's an individual here that doesn't really have a pal or whether that's we have two new horses coming together. Yeah, I guess that makes it a bit um, easier then, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, so we'll pal them up and obviously the setup that we've got here, they can go in a paddock next door to the main herd. Yep, um, which get to know each other great. over the fence for a bit first. Yep. And yeah, then obviously pop them all in together. Come on, boys! So how many are out here at the moment? One, two, three, four, five. 19? <laughs> Look at those two playing over there. 19. Oh, <laughs> they're going to show us their speed. So up in the front we have Burlington, who you've met. Yep. At the Cashel Man. <laughs> the Bahamian River. And Bruno is three merry lads. lads. Woo, Woo, hey boys. Penny Matt. Hello. Hello. Oh wow, <laughs> this is the playful one. Oh, these two, yeah, they were playing behind those building shelters a minute ago. Oh, they all look so happy. Don't they? Oh. <laughs> oh. And this one's coming along to adjudicate or get involved. Yeah. Bruno came in actually um, six months ago via ROR, Retraining of Resources. Um, this one at the back here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, God, he's looking and lovely. When they um, sent him to us, they said, to, We've got a little horse for you. <laughs> we were expecting this little 15 too. And he is humongous, as you can see. Yeah, he is. Big, playful. And is he in ridden work? Or? No, he's got no. missing spine. Oh, okay. Um, so unfortunately, he can't be rehomed. But is he training to be a yeah, so, therapy horse? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, amazing. And again, because That's of the white so... face, he um, is a firm favourite to the students. He's beautiful, yeah. Oh, and he's got white leggies too. Hello, Bruno. You're not Bruno. Who's this? That's Sully. Sully? Sully came in as a rescue 18 months ago. Oh. As you can see. Bruno's is seeing Sully off. Well, lovely to meet you all. I'm not going to do the name test because I don't think I'll get it right. There's too many bay thoroughbreds. <laughs> oh. And the cheeky one's calmed down now there. Who, who's he decided is his best friend today? <laughs> Oh really? The establishment? Yeah. What's a posh I name? I thought it was only thoroughbreds here. <laughs> <laughs> we've got two little legs too. So we've got Lola, who is the patchy pony, who does not want to talk to me. <laughs> Lola, she's like, don't take me away from this grass. I've been removed from starvation for to meet the camera, meet the vlog. Hello, are you going to say hello? You are oh my goodness, this one's even smaller than Dinks, I think. Hello. Glad Gladys? Gladys, you're sweet. Hello. You're very sweet. And so are these used to like, if the children are a little bit nervous of the bigger horses, they can meet the little horses first or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? I don't think Lola's gonna want to say hello to me. She's scared I'm gonna remove her. Go on, let me just touch your bum. <laughs> She's like, nope. I'm not gonna take you away. <laughs> Oh, and they've also got an outdoor classroom so they can do some of their education out in the sunshine. And the gardening, they keep on top of the gardening for you too. <laughs> We've already shown the greenhouse. Lovely, it's such a lovely place. I don't want to leave. 
<laughs> I want to stay here. I want a job here too. content aren't they? Mm. I, I just expected them to get to the gate and then like hoon off to meet their friends but they've just leisurely strolled Hold over. <laughs> yeah. How's your day going? Yeah, Mine's yeah. been pretty good. Yeah. Went for a little walk down the drive, yeah. did a bit of filming, <laughs> apparently I was on a vlog. <laughs> oh. No it is, it's just, but it's just so, we've said it multiple times but just so peaceful here and that's... I know I feel like I need to be quiet just so that you can hear all the birds tweeting and the... all the different animals. Yeah. Absolutely lovely. Thank you for having us, ladies. Giving us a grand tour of this fabulous place. <laughs> enjoyed it. I oh, you've enjoyed it. Absolutely loved it. But I am interested to know. I've seen the pictures. It was a dairy farm when you first came here. Yes. It was, it was incredibly uh, hard to make it like this. Well, it still looks a bit, a little bit like a dairy farm. But <laughs> no, it does not. It's not sort of the what you might call the conventional stabling arrangements. But I decided that actually the horses that we were rehabilitating at the time and retraining mm -hmm. needed to go out of that normal training discipline, which is fantastic for them, of course. But yeah. if you're going to put them into a domestic career, you have to slightly treat them a bit differently. Okay, and you've just recently celebrated 25 years. Yes, my husband and I started. My late husband and I started this um, in 1993 because at the time there wasn't anywhere for um, former racehorses to go. So when they retired, okay. there wasn't a particular career in place right. for them. Yeah. So there were three charities in the UK um, that were set up at the time that all had set themselves up to look after those racehorses when their racing days were over. So we thought, right, okay, well, we've had such a great result of this, we'll become a registered charity. So having started it in 1993, we became a registered charity in 1998. Oh, amazing. So 25, 25 years. Ah, oh, and you've also... Yes, and I congratulations was... Congratulations as oh, well. Thank you. <laughs> and so it, it was so fortuitous because we were, we were greatly honoured that Her Majesty the Queen um, came to see us um, um, and also uh, her, um, the Princess Royal. So it's fabulous. But this year I was honoured for um, uh, my, my services to uh, former racehorses Aww. and disadvantaged Incredible. children. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm and an know, awarded an MBE. An MBE, yeah. An MBE. Yes. Wow. Oh, so you truly deserved as well. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. 100%. But... No, oh, I think what you've done here is absolutely incredible and helping all the children and the adults and we and were the first people to ever use so we started up our educational programs in 2006 and we were literally the first people I think to not only use former racehorses but also to use any equine meat because there was in place RDA but they weren't used that, that was for riding we don't do riding here which okay. you've learned along the way yes. since you've been here mm -hmm. yeah. so ours works hand in hand um, uh, with you know sort of to enable children to get back into the classroom environment so um so we're very individual but thankfully we provided another career for former racehorses yeah, yeah. just great with on its own yes, yes. it is, <laughs> it is thank you thank you much. yeah thank you for showing us around it's been yeah. fantastic i've thoroughly enjoyed I'm it i don't actually want to leave no i know <laughs> yeah it's been brilliant it's, oh. so, it's just so tranquil here and so well, yeah you can see how the horses they're so here. content aren't they they go and, and I always worry because I live just here. Yeah. And I always worry if I hear what I call horses shouting, I know yeah. I've got an unhappy horse. Yeah, because it's you it's wouldn't just, know that we've yeah. got what thirty-five here. Yeah. And what a beautiful place to live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had a load of bread from me just a minute ago. So. <laughs> and what are they called? 
This is Parker, because they're Thunderbirds, you see. Sorry, we were leaving, but like, I don't really want to leave. <laughs> Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds. Can you remember Thunderbirds? So yeah, there's Parker yeah. and Penelope. Oh, so that's his wife, Penelope. Penelope. Oh. Um, and then we've got Percival and Prunella, who are the white ones. Oh. They scurried across there, didn't yes. they? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't know whether they're down here. But whilst we're leaving and going out of the Walk of Fame, I wanted to find out about Greatwood Guardians because how do we get our names on this wall? Can you oh, tell me a bit more? Well, um, we've called it Greatwood Guardians because in amongst all our animals that we have here, we have peacocks <laughs> who are renowned for their guardianship. So that is the emblem there, which is a guardian. So all our guardians would have that, which symbolises Greatwood and guarding and yeah. looking after Greatwood. And it's similar, it, it's five, for five pounds a month, you'll get a newsletter, yeah. you get one um, a time when you can come and visit here, yeah. and we do all sorts of, we do a kind of a big party for everybody, yeah. as a big thank you. Oh. Oh, everybody's oh, kept in touch. <laughs> yeah, everybody's kept in touch, but yeah. it's really, really to say, it's the lifeblood, the guardianship is the lifeblood of Greatwood, because um, I know exactly then, or we know exactly how much money we're getting in per month. Yeah. So I never know whether or not there's going to be a kind soul that gives me a hundred pounds, yeah, but yeah. I do know that, that there's going to be some kind soul that giving. gives me five pounds a month, yeah. and I know mm. I can rely yeah. upon that. So that makes. Oh, a I'd huge definitely difference. like to join and be one of Thank those kind you. souls. Thank <laughs> you so much. Yeah. Oh, exciting! Thank you so much Thank again for having pleasure. us. We will leave you in peace. <laughs> Go back to normal tranquility. But yeah, it's been brilliant, and we'll I think it's. Oh, look, they're all there. Look. They're all there now. What you do? I did joke that we might get tested on the names of all the animals before we leave, but I don't oh, think I'm going to remember this is them Cheryl all. Cheryl coming up here. Cheryl, <laughs> yeah, Cheryl Cole, because she's, she's a black hen. <laughs> oh, oh no, they've all got. They're gorgeous, aren't they? And Emily's loving your purple theme. Aren't yes, you? I do love the purple. Oh, yeah. well, I, well, when we came here, you can see how dreadful it was, can't you? From the photos, yeah. yeah. And I just thought, I can't, and it was all grey breeze blocks. It was yeah. absolutely awful, awful, You wanted awful. to be vibrant. And, and I thought, everybody chooses green, don't they? Yeah. Red, yeah. Red's yeah. angry to me. Yeah. <laughs> Yellow. Mm, Purple's and present. I thought, well, I got married in purple. Oh. So I ah. well, I purple's your, your colour. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, mum would be very impressed with your yeah, flowers. I love the flowers. Yes. Oh, Hi, Cheryl. Nice to meet you. Have you Beautiful. Seen the in the wood here? The, the, no. The what? I didn't there was more to see. That's what it's, you've got babies. It's Blanche. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is Blanche. Who's had a brood. Oh, my goodness. Oh, how lovely. It really is the perfect place. Yay. Oh my goodness, how incredible. I don't feel like this all the way. Yeah. It's just heartwarming. It is heartwarming and not only like you can tell the horses are all so happy, but all the people are just so yeah. lovely yeah. and really caring and they love what they Passionate do. about their yes. job and the animals. Yeah, and like Susie, so nice. she had been there right from the beginning. Yeah. Then went off Left because for a little she, bit. Yeah, because she had a bit of a passion within studs. Yeah. And yeah, going to a breeding yard, but then she's come back again. So that I think that just shows. Yeah, she said that she wanted to work in all aspects of a race horse or a thoroughbred's life, didn't yes. she? So, yeah. yeah, so lovely. And I think this can be pretty short and sweet because I feel like the content we've got speaks for itself. Or 100%. Like, yeah. Yeah. Huge thank you to Great British Racing. Yeah. Exactly. for organising yeah. our yeah. tour around there this morning. Yeah, and I thoroughly really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And and for organising National Racehorse Week because it enables you guys to go and visit yards too, whether it's a training, aftercare or a stud. Yeah. You Whatever can, part of the racehorse's life you, you want, want to go to, and... Yeah, go and have a bit more insight into. And I actually, from doing this for the last three years now, I feel like I've learned so much that I just didn't, I never imagined. Yeah. And you're actually quite passionate about potentially getting one of I know. Yes, I am. <laughs> Not for Which a few is years, exciting. But yes, it is exciting, but it is through this that's made me want to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, so Aww. make sure that you go over to the website. I'm sure it will be on screen here. It will be, and it will also <laughs> be in the link in the description box below. Yay! <laughs> um, you can pop your postcode in, it will tell you yards near you. But equally, if you fancy a bit of a further afield jaunt, it's well worth it, I would say, to Definitely. go to one that's maybe here. Yeah. You'll find on there all the yards, they'll say what they have got going on yeah. that day because sometimes they have like vets out or farriers. Yeah, yeah they have specific dem demonstrations, exactly. things, don't they? And it will also say what facilities that yard has. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, 
so really check, good. So go check that out. And thanks again, Great British Racing, for sorting it all out for us because we thoroughly enjoyed it and we hope you guys have enjoyed watching. Yeah, if you have, make sure that you like this video. Comment down below which one was your favourite power horse. Was yeah. it power horse? Yeah, what was your favourite oh. power horse? <laughs> oh, Marv. Marvellous. Marvellous. Marvel. 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 <laughs> Still can't say Marvel it. Marvellous. Oh, I don't know. Anyways. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I thought we were going to bring Dave home for a minute, but. <laughs> yeah, you like Dave. He's not quite ready at that stage of his education quite yet, but if you are looking, you know, keep an eye on their website. Yeah because he will be looking for a home soon. And also, yeah, do comment below if you have experience of owning that X-Ray horse. I'd love to hear, like you had some yeah. feedback before. I'd love to hear a bit more about them. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. And see you all soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.